Hey guys, it's Courtney with The Kitchen Garden. I am so glad you're here because you must be interested in starting a raised bed garden or maybe you already have one and you're just looking for a little bit of guidance. Well, I'm here to help. So let's get started on exactly what you need to do to start a raised bed garden. I'm gonna take you step by step through the process that I used before starting mine. You can see it back here. This is just part of it. I have a few different raised bed gardens throughout my yard. Um, this is the main garden. And uh, let me tell you all about what you'll need to know in order to get started. Okay guys, so the first thing that you wanna consider when you're thinking about starting a raised bed garden is finding the perfect place in your yard. Location, location, location isn't just true for real estate, it's also true for your uh, garden space. So there's a couple of things that you wanna consider and typically, I encourage people to begin with a sun map of their yard. And that sounds maybe a little fancy, but it's really quite a simple uh, process. It's just thinking about your yard. You can even uh, sketch out just a picture of your yard, you know, with your house kind of in the middle or whatever your growing space happens to be. And you're going to want to just shade what parts of your yard get the most sun. So you're gonna shade um, the areas of your yard that get four hours or less, um, maybe blue, you can choose the colors that you want. And then the parts of your yard that maybe get four to six hours, you wanna shade them a different color, maybe orange. And then the parts of your yard that get six hours or more, uh, sunlight a day, you're going to want to shade them a different color, maybe yellow. And these are the areas, the parts of your yard that get six hours or more sun a day, are really the kind, the really the areas that you're probably going to consider first for a raised bed garden. So location one is about the sunshine, uh, because really, especially for a lot of your summer vegetables, you think um, bell peppers and tomatoes, things that require a lot of heat, things that require a lot of sun, um, six hours um, is really kind of the minimum that you want uh, to have on those plants. So you want to put your raised bed somewhere where you're going to get good sunlight. Okay. The second thing that you want to consider is access to water. Are you pretty close to a spigot or is it a place where you can have a rain barrel installed pretty easily to have water right there? You don't want to be lugging a heavy hose um, super far and you don't want to be carrying water cans all the time, especially if you have plans for growing your garden um, beyond just one raised bed. Okay, watering can be one of those gardening chores that takes up a lot of your time. So consider that. Consider your access to water. And then finally, you're going to want to think about um, out of sight, out of mind. So over the years as we've installed raised garden beds for people, um, and even as we've had hours put in different places in the yard, I have found that I tend to the beds that I can see most frequently. So the ones that are here are pretty close to our back door and I see them every time I walk out, every time I go into the garage, I'm checking out these beds. But the ones that are on the south side of our house uh, that are really, I don't really walk over to that area of the yard very often, tended to suffer because they were just out of sight. So you also want to consider a place where you're gonna have your eyes on them, um, both for just management of your plants, um, watering and things like that, but also for pest control, because really you are the most effective method of pest control is having your eyes on your plants and checking for holes and checking to see if you see any eggs and things like that. So you wanna have your garden bed, one, in a place that gets crucial amounts of sunshine. Um, secondly, it's you're going to want to have a, a water source pretty close so that watering is easy and then third a place that you're going to see it pretty frequently and be thinking about your garden so that's location now let's move on to the second thing and that's going to be what type of bed is going to be best for you okay guys so it's winter so everything is a little more dreary than it is in the spring uh, but i just wanted to show you some options that you you have four raised beds. So you'll see the big bed behind me. This is a custom made, um, pretty tall bed. It comes about hip height on me. And uh, my husband built this for me, uh, made out of corrugated metal and treated lumber. Really love it. It's, it's really great because you don't have to bend over in order to, uh, or get down on your knees in order to work in the garden. Um, I love it. Downside, it is a pain to fill. You can imagine how much soil it takes to fill that bad boy, and you would be right. <laughs> so 
so um, so that's just something to consider okay second thing you can consider something like a burn ring so you see it down here this is a really easy maybe the easiest form of raised bed that you can buy a, a burn ring I purchased this one at tractor supply is literally a large ring that um, would be uh, for my brain just totally stopped a burn ring is something that you would literally use to burn wood in like a fire pit it has no bottom at the bottom and you uh, just literally put it on the ground fill it with soil and you're ready to go so I added the obelisk to it because I can then grow uh, vining vegetables and things like that on it really love it and it adds um, a certain um, vertical quality to your garden which just looks really nice and then the last option is going to be just your traditional wood raised bed um, I know that there are also options out there for um, rectangular and square beds made out of um, metal or uh, composite material and so any of those work but we're just talking about a lower to the ground um, square or rectangular bed they're very easy to put together I have several um, tutorials on my website that show you exactly how to build them so they're great very easy and honestly could just be put together in a, in a couple of hours and your garden could be started so you can think about custom made beds that are pretty large there's lots of companies that do that for you you can think about a burn ring for something very simple or you can look into building your own wood raised bed or consider uh, a corrugated metal bed um, i know garden in minutes carries those and so the planner that comes with the free planner that i offer on my website um, for raised bed gardening will allow you to think through those options and which one is best so the next thing we're going to talk about is once you have a bed in place how are you going to fill it and what's the best thing to use so let's talk about that okay guys so once you have your beds in place um, then how in the world are you going to fill them you could simply you could certainly go to your local um, garden center or hardware store and pick up bags of soil it's what I did when we were first starting out um, it's not a it's not a terrible option but to be honest it's a pretty expensive option okay um, the other choice that you have if if you don't want to go with bag soil is to make your own soil I have a great recipe for a DIY soil mix um, on my website so I'll link that for you guys um, it's a great way to get more soil for less money and to know exactly what's in your soil. Um, sometimes when you buy those bag mixes, you're not 100% sure what you're getting. So consider making your own soil if you can. The other option, especially if you're dealing with a bed this big, this is a huge U-shaped bed. That's about three feet tall. The other option you consider is soil in bulk. This is definitely what I recommend, especially if you have more than one bed to fill. So you can call around to your, your local, usually it's like a mulch dealer, um, and, they, and they will have bulk bins of soil. Here comes Minnie. Um, <laughs> so the great thing about that is that you can get an entire cubic yard for a fraction of the price that you would pay for a cubic yard of bagged soil from a garden center or a hardware store. So it's definitely the most cost effective option. And once you develop a relationship with uh, your local mulch center or your soil producer, um, then you'll be able to um, you know, ask them when it's the freshest, ask who tests it. I know that uh, most of the soils from our local mulch, mulch center are all tested um, by our local state university and they make sure that everything is checking out. So. Um, bulk soil is my recommendation if you can. Normally you just drive up with your truck and a tarp in the back and they'll use a front end loader and dump it in there and it's really easy. It is a little bit of work whenever you are trying to um, get it out of the back of the truck but we all need a little exercise. So consider that. You can use your bag mulches or your bag soils. You can use um, a homemade soil mix which is easy to put together or you can choose to purchase your so soil in bulk so those are your three choices that you have for filling your beds but you want to make sure that you fill your beds with quality soil you don't want to go get bags of topsoil and put that in there um, it's really going to be pretty nutrient deficient remember you're growing plants in this medium so you want to make sure 
that whatever you choose is of good quality because that's going to affect the plants that you're going to want to grow and you want to grow healthy plants. Okay guys, so the last thing that I want to talk about is how to water your garden. Once you have your location picked out and your bed in place and you filled it with good quality soil and you even have gotten your, um, you, maybe you haven't gotten your plants yet because you do want to kind of have a watering plan in place, how are you going to water? Remember I said you wanted access to water pretty close, so here's a couple of my favorite options. Okay, the first if your garden's pretty small, you might could just do something simple with hand watering. This is a Barron's um, galvanized uh, water. Love it. This has got to be three or four years old, and it stays outside all the time, and it is tough. Love that. The second option would be just a traditional sprinkler. Um, I don't. It's not my favorite, okay? Because it's obviously going to get the leaves of your plants wet, and that's not always a good thing. But it worked for my grandparents, that they didn't starve. So if a sprinkler is what you have, then by all means, you can use a sprinkler. Um, it's your garden, okay? Um, the other option, option number three, would be soaker hoses. Um, these come in either a flat or a round style. I have flat in my, in my row garden in the back, and I do like those. Um, they tend to be a little tricky to put into place. You, don't, you can't kink them or anything like that, or they won't work effectively. Um, but soaker hoses are definitely an option that's, I would say, better than sprinklers since it's going to water right at the base of your plant, which is really important. Okay. The fourth and final option that I would recommend, these are garden grids made by Garden in Minutes. And uh, it uses, you hook it up to your hose and you can set it even on a timer. And each of these black poles here has tiny little holes in it and you can, they can all spray in toward a square essentially, um, or you can turn them, especially these outside pieces to the outside, so they fit right in a bed. This is actually made for a four by four bed. You can see it. And it comes almost, all, I say almost fully assembled. Um, very easy uh, to just set into your bed, hook up to your hose and use. I've been super pleased and I even have a large one that goes into my big bed here. So uh, I love them. We've had them for several years and I, I think it's probably my number one watering method now. I find that uh, waters well. I have a good idea of how much water my plants are getting. Unlike a soaker hose, it's always a little bit of a mystery to me. I usually have to dig down to see um, if the, how much the water has really soaked in. So, so far the garden grids are a winner for me. So watering your garden, next recommendation. Now let's talk about, um, finally, are you gonna use plants or seeds for your raised bed garden? Okay, so you can see I have what's left of my winter garden. Head of cabbage, some kale that I've been harvesting, and the, the rest of the bed is pretty bare. You can see I've got some sorrel in the bed over there. Um, it grows year-round. Love it. It's delicious. If you've never grown sorrel, this is my plug for sorrel. <laughs> so um, once you have your raised bed in place, how do you know what to plant? Um, the raised bed gardening guide that I've included is has some lists of things that are seasonally appropriate. So you always want to consider the season. Um, you know, spring, summer, winter and fall, I, we can grow year round here, even though we get some pretty cold weather. So you want to consider where you live. If you're using seeds, then look at the back of the seed package and there should be some great information on there about when those seeds should be planted based on whatever your growing zone is. We're in zone 8A here, so I might could start things, not might, I definitely can start things sooner than someone in zone seven or, z or zone six, someone who lives further north. Um, but my parents who live in Florida in um, zone nine can grow things sooner than I can. So you're gonna wanna consider what time of year you're growing and the plants that you want to grow. Um, if you are nervous about starting from seed, then consider seedlings. There are some plants that you really have to grow from seed. And these would be things like carrots and um, radishes, your um, any any type of bean. Really, they're very easy to grow from seed, and you really do need to start them from seed. Um, if you see carrot seedlings, don't buy them. <laughs> Just plant your own seeds. Um, other things like kale, 
um, and even cabbage. You can easily start this from seedlings. Both of these things grow really well in the early spring because they still like the cool nights and the warmer days. So as you get into summertime, you'll notice that the types of plants that are available at your local garden center um, will change because warmer temperature plants will be coming into season and this will be your peppers and your okra and your tomatoes and all those summer favorites. Now, um, be sure that you're purchasing your plants and your seeds from reputable places. I really love buying my plants from local garden centers, not really the big box stores, because I feel like they care for them a little bit better. Maybe they understand plants a little more. So something to consider. Um, there are also some really great seed companies that you can choose some lovely um, heirloom seed varieties or even hybrid varieties, especially if you're an experienced gardener and you know that you've struggled with certain diseases or pests in your area. There are ways um, to grow certain varieties of vegetables um, that help you to avoid those things. So these are things to consider. And I have a long list on my website of great seed companies, so be sure to check that out. So that's all you really need to get started. Choose a place, make sure it's close to water, fill it really well, have a plan for how you're going to water your garden, and then finally make some good choices on what you're gonna plant. And you can use any kind of method uh, of planting that works well for you. And these are things that you can look up, like in an intensive planting or, or um, square foot gardening is so great uh, for beginner gardeners. And those garden grids that I mentioned make square foot gardening very simple. Um, so don't be afraid to try things. Even as a gardener myself, I try new things each year and some things work out and some things just don't. And that's okay. That's just one of the things uh, that makes being a gardener so fun. So enjoy creating a raised bed garden in your backyard. I'm always available at thekitchengarten.com to answer any questions that you might have. I welcome emails and I just can't wait to see what you grow.